guys, so today I'm coming to you with a sample game of X-Wing. If you're not familiar with X-Wing, this is a great starting point. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through the gameplay, the setup, um, and uh, look at the different ships and some different mechanics and just kind of the way everything happens. This is a 66 point game. What that means is between all cards and upgrades, the Imperial side has 66 points, the Rebel side has 66 points. Typically a game is 100 points, but I wanted to go with something a little bit simpler for a demo game, okay? Um, so, first thing is, I've got my 3x3 three three play mat here. This is the Fantasy Flight Starfield map. This game is balanced and kind of designed to work on a 3x3x3 three foot three foot or 36 inch by 36 inch play surface. However, you can use whatever play surface you like at home. Uh, it's just important to know that the bigger the play surface, the less risk of flying off the board because if one of these, if you know, if my B-Wing here turns and part of his base goes off the board, he is considered fled the battlefield and destroyed. And so if you have a, an infinitely large surface, that'll never happen. So you do want to have some limits. You don't want somebody just to run away. And 3x3 three three is pretty much the standard. <clears throat> As is 100 points is pretty much the standard too. We're just going a little lighter today. So let's look at our ships. Now there are three factions in this game. There's the Empire, there's the Rebellion, and there is the Scum and Villainy faction. Uh, I'm only using the Empire and the Rebellion today because it's primarily a two-player game. So uh, first thing is I've got a TIE Interceptor here, okay, and we have two of these. Now this is the Alpha Squadron pilot. He is got, um, we're gonna still take a look at him. He has pilot skill one. Now this game uses pilot skill in order to move and then to shoot in reverse pilot skill. So that means he is going to move first and he will shoot last. Um, he's got three attack, so that means when he's attacking, he will roll three attack dice. That is his base attack. And attacking is done from the frontal firing arc, uh, the front V on the, uh, on the ship base itself. Uh, he, his next number is agility. He's got three agility. These ships are pretty agile, so he'll roll three green dice if he's defending against another attack. Uh, then he's, his next number is his hull. He has three hull. His, uh, that's how many hits he can take before he's destroyed. Uh, he's got zero shields. He's unshielded, so any damage he takes does go straight to his hull. If he had some shields, then the shields would absorb the damage first. And that's important because critical effects, um, when they are applied to your hull, you have flip, flip a damage card over if you take a critical damage. Uh, but if it goes to shields, then it just impacts on the shield. All right, next he's got an action bar here. Um, he has, uh, he can take a focus, he can barrel roll, he can boost, or he can take an evade. Now focus and evade are both tokens that will go next to him that he can use during combat. Um, and, but the barrel roll and the uh, boost, the two in the middle, those are maneuvering uh, abilities. And those are typically better for higher pilot skill guys, but they're just great to help you reposition. And then his last number here is 18. That is his cost. That is how many points in squad building he costs. And that really matters because it's relative to everything else. Now I'm running two Alpha Squadron pilots. And with the remainder of my points, I'm also running Darth Vader. Now Darth Vader is flying in a TIE Advanced X-1. Um, he has two attacks, or I'm sorry, well let me start at the top. He's got pilot skill 9. Uh, that means he's going to be the last one to move, because 9 is the highest pilot skill in the game. Uh, so he's going to move last, but he'll also shoot first. Um, so that's good. Uh, yeah, pilot skill is a very good thing, and then you'll see that as the game goes on. He's got two attack, that means he rolls two attack dice. So less than the Interceptors, uh, but he's still got three agility, so he's still very uh, agile. Um, he has three hull, the same as the, uh, the, the Interceptors. Three hits will blow him up, but he also has two shields, which will absorb the first two hits that he gets dealt. So uh, effectively, you could say he can take five hits, but the distinction between hull and shields are such that uh, critical hits. Shields are usually better because critical hits won't, won't do much to shields. Um, now on his action bar, his action bar is slightly different, he can take focus. His, his second symbol here is the target lock. Now that's a special action, it also uses tokens, but target locks 
will persist through turns, whereas uh, focus and or evade uh, go away at the end of a turn. Uh, he can also barrel roll, so he's got some maneuver, extra maneuverability, and he can take the evade. Um, down here at the bottom, something that the uh, interceptors didn't have uh, are the um, upgrade things that you can put on him. So he can take what's called the elite pilot talent, and he can take a missile. Um, now, there are some upgrades that every ship can take that, uh, that aren't listed on there, and those are called modifications or, and titles. And they're, um, I'm, gonna, I'm taking a title on this ship, so we're going to look at upgrades now. And this is the TIE X1 title. Um, it goes on a TIE, it's a TIE Advanced only. And what it says is your upgrade bar gains the system upgrade icon. If you equip a system upgrade, its squad point cost is reduced by four to a minimum of zero. So this was a new, this ship originally was kind of underpowered and this was a, a newer way to, to boost it a little bit. And then the next, uh, so it gives it the option to take a system. Now I also have a system upgrade card here. And the TIE advanced, the advanced targeting computer is a TIE advanced only. And Darth Vader is flying TIE advanced. And it says, when attacking with your primary weapon, if you have a target lock on the defender, you may add a critical result to your roll. If you do, you cannot spend target locks during this attack. And so basically this is a way to make the TIE advanced and Darth Vader shoot a little harder and have almost a guaranteed crit every time he's attacking. So it takes him from two attack to actually being much better than just regularly, just regularly having a two attack. And uh, yes, and so that's Darth Vader. Now that's the Empire side. Now on the Rebellion side, we only have two ships, but uh, the point costs are going to be a little higher on some of these ships. Um, and so one of the things that we're going to look at first is we, we have a B-Wing here. And in the B-Wing, there we are flying a Dagger Squadron pilot. And the Dagger Squadron pilot is a pilot skill four. He is... He's right in the middle there, as far as pilot goes. He'll move after the TIE Advance, but before Darth Vader. And he'll also kind of shoot in the middle also. Uh, he's got three attacks, so he's got a strong attack. Uh, he's only got one evade, so he's not very uh, agile. He has three hull, which is about kind of standard. But he's got five shields, so he's a very, he's a very, tanky, uh, very tanky ship. Now he can take the focus and target lock and barrel roll. He doesn't get an evade like the Imperial ships do. Not a whole lot of rebel ships do get an evade. But he also has some extra upgrade icons that I could have upgraded with him with. Uh, he has the system, he has the cannon, and he ha can take two torpedoes. And he comes in at 24 points. Now if I wanted to add anything to him it would probably have increased his point cost. Uh, so I left him just the way he is. And now we've got uh, We've got the big Millennium Falcon here, although it's not running the Millennium Falcon title. We're flying Chewbacca. Chewbacca is piloting this one. And now with, with in all of these ships, they all come with extra pilot cards, so I could have flown Han Solo or even Lando Calrissian if I wanted to. But I picked Chewbacca this time. So Chewbacca is a pilot skill 5, and he is flying a YT-1300. And, uh, and that's, it's, it's important because that it doesn't say the Millennium Falcon because that's not actually a title card you can put on your ship to make it even better. Um, so Chewbacca's flying the uh, YT-1300 and he's got a, um, a pilot, I'm sorry, a pilot skill of five. And uh, Chewbacca, now that pilot skill five isn't bad. He'll move after, uh, move after the dagger squadron, the B-Wing, and he'll shoot before him, but he's still not as good as Darth Vader. Now, for attack, he's got a three. It's with a three attack, but if you'll notice, his symbol here is slightly different. All right. Uh, now, the symbol on Chewbacca is, um, that means he's got a primary weapon turret. Now, what that means is that he can fire outside of his printed firing arc. So, in other words, he can shoot 360 degrees anywhere around him, so he doesn't have to kind of line up his shots, which is great, and it's actually very, very powerful. Um, he has only one agility as well. Again, he's not able to dodge quite that many hits because he's such a big ship. Now he does, he is a huge tank of a ship though because he's got eight hull. This is one of the, uh, one of the ships in the game that has the most hull. And he's got five shields on top of that eight hull. So even though he can't dodge hits, he can certainly absorb a whole lot of them. 
And then he can take, in his action bar, he can take a uh, focus and a target lock. And he can also have the, uh, down here in his upgrades, he can take the elite pilot talent, a missile, and two crew options. And he comes in at 42 points. So he's very, he's far more expensive than most of the other ships we've looked at. And that's one of the reasons why the Rebels only have two ships, because this is a point cost game. One of the things I did not mention yet on his card, as well as in Darth Vader, with unique pilots. Uh, if you notice on Chewbacca's name, he has a little dot right before his name. That means he is unique. You could not field, if you bought two Millennium Falcon expansions, you couldn't fly Chewbacca and Chewbacca. Uh, so that kind of goes without saying, right? You, obviously you couldn't do that. But he also has a special pilot ability right here. Uh, for generic pilots, they'll usually have some flavor text there, but Chewbacca's uh, pilot ability is when you are dealt a face-up damage card, immediately flip it face down without resolving its ability. So if he were to get critically hit and took a face-up damage card, he could ignore that and just flip it face down. And that's a good thing because critical hits do a lot of n nasty, nasty things to you. Darth Vader also had one of these, and I did not, uh, did not talk about it. I skipped right past it, so my mistake there. But Darth Vader's special ability is during your perform action step, you may perform two actions. Now, that's important because normally every ship only gets one action. Darth Vader gets twice that. So that's fantastic. So now that we've looked at all of our ships, I've got my cards set up. I'm going to put my shield tokens on each ship. Uh, so I have five for these guys. Five for the B-Wing, five for the Falcon, two for Darth Vader, and none for the Interceptors. Okay. Um, and we're going to set up on each side of the board. Now we have, um, typically each person has to use this range ruler to, they can only deploy up to range one of the edge, right? But before we do that, we each brought three obstacles, me and the other player, we each bring three obstacles to the game, whether it's a debris cloud or a, an asteroid field, and we'll begin deploying those. One player will have initiative, that means they get to do everything first as far as ties, if there were as a tie for pilot skill. They also means they get to do deploy the first obstacle. If you don't, uh, initiative will, in a casual game, will go to the Imperial player, but if you guys are playing a more serious game, or a like a tournament practice game, or a tournament game, or a league game, or any kind of, usually most games, you roll to determine initiative. Um, so you can just randomly determine it. And so, we'll say for purposes of this game that the Imperial player has won initiative, and he'll get to place the first obstacle. The rules for obstacles is they must go at range 2, from any edge and range one from each other. So, for example, I'll, I'll set these up in the corners to kind of indicate how far they can go. Okay, so he's set up in that corner. And then it would be my turn. And maybe with, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot to this. If, if, you're, if you're more of an advanced player, then you might have some strategies on where you want to go with, with these, but I'm kind of just going to Put them wherever. Make sure they're at least range one from each other, and or 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 farther. But they can't not be within range one of each other. So that's what that means. Um, this guy will go right here. I'm just making sure he's more than two from any edge. And this one will go here. And this one will go there. Okay. And they're all beyond range one of each other. Okay. So now this is our our debris. All of our obstacles are deployed. Um, these are asteroids. These three here are asteroids. If you you don't want to hit those, and you don't want to even fly over them, you definitely don't want to land your ship on one. Same thing with debris clouds. They have slightly different effects. Um, what the rules are as such: if your template crosses over an obstacle, uh, well, I'll do debris clouds first. If your template crosses over a deb debris cloud, um, your ship's going to gain a st uh, stress. On top of that, you also have to roll for damage. And if you roll a critical hit, then you take a critical damage. All right. Um, if you don't roll a critical hit, uh, then you don't take any damage. So, so that's a bad thing. You don't want to end up on these guys because you can, you can take a, you'll take a stress. And stress means you can't take actions. Now asteroids, asteroids are even worse. If one of your, if your thing goes over, if your template goes over an asteroid, or your ship, by the way, and if your template, let's say your template doesn't go over the asteroid, but your ship lands on it, then you still suffer the same effect. But there's more. Um, so you lose your action altogether. You just skip your perform action step. Um, 
you also have to roll for damage, but you'll take damage on either a hit or a crit. So you're more, much more likely to take damage on an asteroid. And they have one extra consequence. If your ship lands on an asteroid, it's where the base is actually on it, even just a tiny little bit, you cannot shoot this round. And so that's really, really bad because, you know, not being able to shoot is, is a pretty big deal, especially if you have a perfect shot lined up. So those are obstacles. Now we'll get to the deployment. Now we're going to deploy in pilot skill order the same as movement. So the ones will go first. Now these guys are marked. This interceptor is marked with a little 26 here. And it's also on his card, and that's to help me distinguish which one is which, in case one card has damage assigned to it and another one doesn't. Uh, we won't forget which one has what. So I'm just going to deploy them right there. Actually, no, I'm going to deploy them over here, and I'm going to let them fly together. And I'm making sure they don't go beyond range one of the edge. Okay. Uh, so all the ones have gone. So no twos, no threes. Fours, so that would be my B-wing. B-Wing is going to come off to the side here also to try to take down some of these interceptors. Okay, uh, so all the rest of the fours done. Fives, that's going to be Chewbacca. Chewbacca's got that turret, right? So, so he's going to try and fly in the middle. So Chewbacca is going to go a little bit more towards the middle. Uh, and, then, and then that's the last, and then Darth Vader will be last. Nines will deploy last. Darth Vader's going to swing around the side. Darth Vader swinging around the side, and he's going to hope to uh, to kind of do like a pincer maneuver, right? We're going to do something like that. Now, obviously, I'd be playing against somebody else, but I'm going to set all the maneuvers and just kind of fly it out, and we'll see, you know, hopefully we'll get to demonstrate all of the actions and the firing, and you'll get to see. All right, so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to set our dials. The Imperial player would set his maneuvers that he wants to do, um, and then lay them down either next to his ship, or next to the ship card, um, and, and it really doesn't matter as long as your opponent doesn't have a problem with it. I usually set mine next to the ship card, um, but it depends how many how many ships you're flying, because you don't want the board to get too crowded, and if there's like six ships on each side, then you everybody's setting them down on the board, it gets a little bit cluttered. So, all right, we're setting those. We're gonna set these two. That. And we'll go like that. All right, so all maneuvers are set. You would go to the other player and say, you good? Good? All right. And we start to do in pilot skill order. So ones will go first. The Imperial player will reveal a three forward here on this uh, tie interceptor. He'll grab his three forward template, slide it right there in between the two little dots on the front of the base, line them up in the two dots on the back of the base. He's completed. A three forward maneuver. He can then perform an action. If you're ever not sure what actions to do, it's always a good idea to take a focus. The next guy, um, the next one, he's going to reveal a four forward. So he will line his little four up there, and that pushes him a little bit further than the other guy who did a three forward. So you can see he's farther forward. Now, for his action, he might not take a focus, he could try to barrel roll and or he could boost and now boost you get to pick the one forward or the one t uh, the one bank and, and go one of those two directions so he'll, he'll boost this way and when you say you're gonna boost you line up your template make sure that it doesn't bump anything and because it has to be clean to make a boost you can't over you can't you can't collide or go through an obstacle with a boost or a barrel roll for that matter so his action was a maneuvering action it was called a boost all right, um, now we're up to all the ones have completed. So twos, threes, there's no twos or threes, fours. Okay, fours, and we have a four. So Dagger Squadron, he's going to reveal a three forward. All right, he's going to go forward. Now, he could, uh, he could barrel roll. Um, he is instead going to take a target lock. And, well, he's going to attempt to, a tar to get a target lock. So a target lock action you have to, is basically a lock on one other ship, and you can only use it in attacking against that other ship, and you can spend it to reroll any number of attack dice. So he's going to attempt to get a target lock on this little TIE Interceptor here, number 27. 
Now, in order to do that, he has to be within range 3 of me. And I use this to determine that he is within range 3. Now, an important distinction, you don't have to be in front of me. I could take a target lock on a ship that's behind me or whatever. Um, but it's good to have, the, it's good, you just have to measure to make sure that they're at range 3. So then I will take two matching uh, tokens, and these both say E on them. They have different letters on the other sides. Uh, so I'll put the blue one on my ship and the red one on the ship that has the target lock. So now this guy has target locked onto him. That was his action. Uh, next, so let's say for fours, fives, next, uh, we're going to go with Chewbacca. He is going to do a one bank this way. Um, now, he didn't go that far. Chewbacca is also going to attempt a target lock on this TIE Interceptor. And when we line this up, we see that he's not even close to being within range. Alright, so Chewbacca is too far to get a target lock on anybody, so he is just going to take a focus. And so that's it for number five. No six, sevens, or eights, or nine. Well, nines, we do have a nine. We have Darth Vader. Darth Vader is going to reveal a five forward. Five is the fastest maneuver in the game. And he's going to go there. Now, as per his pilot ability, he gets two actions. It's important to know that you can never take the same action twice. If for, Some people can get other multiple actions through other means, but nobody can ever take the same action twice. So, Darth Vader will focus and evade. All right, now, now we check for shooting. Nine gets to shoot first, but he, within his pr printed firing arc, he can only go from this far out and nobody is in range. So nine, then we work our way down, eight, seven, six, five, Chewbacca's next. Chewbacca has nobody to shoot. He obviously is not going to shoot at the B-Wing. The B-Wing is within range. Um, uh, so then we go to four. Now we have the B-Wing. Now the B-Wing does have a shot on this interceptor. Now it falls within range three. So the d three different numbers, range three, two, and one. Um, think of one as being close range, two as being me medium range, and three as being long range. Range three gives the defender an extra green die when attacking. So. And normally we'll refer to his agility. He's got three agility. He'll get a fourth die for his for his when he when it's his turn to defend. So the B-wing's going to attack first, and he's going to get two eyeballs and a hit. Now the eyeballs, if I had a focus, I could spend that and turn all of my eyeballs to hits. Um, however, I don't have a focus. I have a target lock, so I can spend my target lock, which I will. And I get to re-roll any number of my dice. Dice can only be re-rolled one time. But I'll re-roll these two. And I got, oh, look at that. I got three hits. All right. So now number 27 here, he gets four dice. And he rolls one evade, two eyeballs, and a blank. So the evade will cancel one hit. If he had a focus, he could spend that and turn all of his eyeballs to evades. So focus would have been great for either person. Focus is all around good. And that's why I said when in doubt, focus. And a blank. So we have we have a, one evade that cancels a hit. Uh, and then we have two hits that get through. So that means two damage to this num interceptor number 27. And so we'll take cards from our damage deck and assign them to his ship card. He's got two damage cards. But his hull is three, so he is still alive. So four. Four is shot, threes, twos, ones. Ones gets to shoot. Now, this guy's turned at an angle, and the B-Wing is actually just outside of his firing arc. So he does not have, he has range, but you have to use the printed firing arc. If he had stayed going straight, then it would have been different. Because he turned in such a way that the B-Wing is no longer in his arc, he cannot shoot at him. So he does not get to return fire this turn. So that's going to be the end of the turn. All of our green tokens come up, because they're only good for the end of the turn. If I had not spent the target lock, it would remain. Okay? Alright. Um, we're also going to talk about maneuvers, right? 
Uh, it's at a certain point, we're probably going to start doing red maneuvers. Red maneuvers will give you a stress token, and if you have a stress token, you won't be able to take an action. So that's important to know. Uh, we're going to set all, our, all of our dials right now. So do that for him. Do. that for him. We'll do that for him. And we're going to take it slow there and and there. Okay, so we're all set. Ones are going to go first. 27 is going to opt to go for it. Now, for the, my two pilot skill ones on the Imperial side, you have the choice. You can do this guy first or this guy first. In this particular case, I'm choosing to do this guy first so he gets out of the way so the other guy doesn't bump him. All right, so 27 is doing a hard one turn. This is a white maneuver, so nothing special about it. Um, he then can barrel roll, focus, or boost. Now. I have a feeling, he, he has a feeling this B-Wing's going somewhere this way. So what he'd like to do is get out of the B-Wing's firing arc. So he's going to barrel roll, and I'll take the one, and I set it on either side. I'll take it, barrel, try to barrel roll this side, and I can set it all the way to the front, all the way to the back, or somewhere in between. And we'll go front, and then I then pick my ship up and put it on the other side, anywhere I want. So you can kind of get a little bit farther forward when you barrel roll. All right, so that's his action. 26 behind is doing a two forward. And that's another thing too, is they would have bumped, or he might have bumped if I hadn't gotten out of the way. And this guy will take a focus. Okay, so that's our ones, twos, threes, fours. We're up to four, the B-Wing. The B-Wing is doing a one forward. So the interceptor guessed wrong he thought the B-Wing was going to go a little faster than that, but now they're both right there and can shoot each other, but the B-Wing has a barrel roll option also. And what he's going to do so he doesn't get shot is he's going to barrel roll oops, to the side of this interceptor. Now the beauty of that is the interceptor's arc is right here, so it put him just outside of his firing arc, but he'll still be able to shoot him. So that's why these maneuverability actions are really, really cool. All right, so four, five. Five is Chewbacca, and he is doing a, uh, a one bank. Again, not that fast. Now Chewbacca is going to... Chewbacca is just going to take a focus. I could take a target lock on this guy. I think he's in range. But I'd also wouldn't mind shooting at Darth Vader if he gets closer. However, I know he's too far to take a target lock now, and a, f and a focus is good on either attack or defense. So in this case, I'm going to take a focus. In Darth Vader's turn, he's doing a three bank. Okay, Darth Vader is going to do a three bank there. First thing he's going to do is attempt a target lock on Chewbacca. He is within range. So Darth Vader will take, put a target lock on Chewbacca. Second thing he's going to do is focus. Now he's got the magic combination of attack. He's got a target lock and a focus. So that looks great. All right, beginning of combat, Darth Vader is going to attack Chewbacca. Now this is range three, so Chewbacca, who normally gets only one green die, will get two green dice. When Darth Vader gets to attack first. There he rolls. He's going to get a hit and a focus. Now he's got the advanced targeting computer. Because he has a target lock on Chewbacca, he's going to be able to add a critical result to his attack. So we have a hit and an eyeball. We'll add the crit to it and then I will spend my focus, so I pick this token up, to flip all of my eyeballs to hits. And I only had one eyeball in this case. So the end result of the attack is crit, hit, hit. That's not bad. Now Chewbacca gets two dice and we rolled a blank and a focus. I can spend my focus to flip this eyeball to a, an evade, which would cancel one of those, or I can save my focus for attack. 
So what I'm gonna do with Chewbacca this time is I'm gonna try to save my focus for attack, and I'm just gonna take all three. Now there's a critical. What happens is you assign regular damage first, one, two, and then the critical goes last. Because I still have shields, I'm gonna take three shield tokens off, I'm gonna put them back in my little token bin. This leaves Chewbacca with only two shields. He still hasn't taken any damage to his hull yet, and Chewbacca's special ability would treat that crit almost like a normal damage anyway. So the crits aren't that bad on Chewbacca. All right, so nine is shot. So now the next down, working down the, the chain, we're gonna go to Chewbacca next. Chewbacca can take a shot at Darth Vader. Darth Vader spent his focus, um, or we can take a shot at one of these ties. Uh, I'm gonna shoot at Darth Vader. Now this will also be at range three. So Chewbacca gets three attack dice. Darth Vader has three defense, three agility but he also adds one more for being at range three. All right, so Chewbacca's gonna roll three dice. Wow, that's a very, very good roll. I didn't see I should have spent my focus on defense because I happened to roll perfectly. I rolled a, a crit and two hits. Darth Vader gets to roll four dice. Um, oh, and Darth, Darth Vader only rolls one evade. So the evade cancels a hit first because crits are always assigned and canceled last. Now, had Darth Vader saved his focus, he would have had you know, a much better roll. All right, so uh, we cancel that one, so a hit and a crit will go to Darth Vader. He has two shields, and they will both be absorbed by those damage. Now Darth Vader has no shields remaining. All right, so Chewbacca took out Vader's shields. Next is the B-Wing. Now this B-Wing is gonna attack this TIE fighter, or this TIE interceptor that's right in front of him. Now he's in range one. Now this is the close range shot. So normally the B-Wing has three red dice, but being at range one when you're attacking, you're so close you get an extra red dice. So I'm gonna get to roll four dice versus his three agility. So, so we get two hits, an eyeball and a blank. So really only two damage. I don't have anything else to modify because I barrel rolled. If I had taken a focus, I could have turned this eyeball into a hit, or if I had taken a target lock, I could re-roll some dice. All right, and he's gonna roll one evade an eyeball, and a blank. So the evade will cancel one hit and one damage goes through. Fortunately, 27 already has two damage on him from last turn. Boom, so he is destroyed. All right, and just to mark, normally you don't do this, but just for the video's sake, boom, he was right there, now he's dead. All right, so 26 is gonna shoot. 26 is uh, our ones. Now he can shoot. He's got Chewbacca in his firing arc. So he could shoot there. Or he could shoot at the B-Wing. Now, in this case, the B-Wing is range 2, so he won't get any extra. If he shoots at Chewbacca, Chewbacca gets an extra green die. The B-Wing won't get an extra green die in this case. So he's going to shoot at the B-Wing with three dice. And he rolled a focus, or I'm sorry, an eyeball and two hits. He will spend his focus to turn that into three eyeballs. And uh, now the B-Wing only gets one green die, and it's an eyeball, so nothing. So three damage straight to the B-Wing. That was a great shot by the Interceptor. And we'll take three shields off. That leaves the B-Wing with two shields remaining. Okay, and that's all of the shooting for the round. Um, and again, normally you don't mark destroyed ships. I just did it for the video. Okay. Uh, you just pick them up. All right, next turn, we're going to set our dials and sure we'll do that oh, that's a good idea Dial. There it is, the interceptor dial. Okay. So I'm setting all my dials here. All right, set dials. We're ready to go. The interceptor is going to go first. He's doing a two bank. Now, this is a green maneuver. If I had a stress, a green maneuver would clear one stress from me. Um, but it's. I don't have any stress. We haven't done any red maneuvers yet. 
So he moved here. Now he could... He's, basically, it looks like he's going after the Falcon right here. So he could try to take a focus, which has always worked well for him. And I think that's what he'll do. Focus is generally good. Um, Darth Vader... Well, wait, I'm sorry, Darth Vader goes last. Well, that was one. We're going to go to four. Dagger Squadron. He's doing a two K-turn. Now, it's a red maneuver. Now, the K-turn basically lets you go, and if you can complete your maneuver, basically what it does like a U-turn. So, I'm going to use this guy as an example. If, I, if he was doing it, he would do it, and if he could complete it, then he turns around. So, think of a U-turn. It's called a K-turn. It stands for Koyagran Maneuver. And it, uh, it does assign a stress to you, and it's red. Um, now, in this case, we cannot complete this because our base would be overlapping this ship. So in the case, this was going to cause what's called a bump. In a case where you cannot complete the maneuver, you'll just go as far forward as you can until you're touching that ship. And then uh, assign a stress token because it still was a red maneuver. Even though I did not get to complete the K-turn, I still get the red maneuver because any red maneuver gives you a stress, whether you bump or not. So bumping. Uh, bumping is also another thing that we've just done here, but it's important to talk about it because if you if you bump a ship, you just go as far as you could have gone, or if you're turning, you keep your ship right along the uh, the maneuver template. You go as far forward as you can. You also lose your ability to perform an action. You skip your perform action step when you bump. So um, ships bump all the time. Also, when you're touching another ship from a bump, you cannot shoot that other ship, and that ship cannot shoot you. And that's meant to simulate. Uh, if you guys are flying in 3D space, this guy's above you and you just can't, you can't figure out where each other are. Uh, so that's kind of what bumping means. Right, um, so that was fours, fives, Chewbacca is next. He's revealing a two turn this way. So we'll line him up. So Chewbacca's got a large base. He's, uh, the, ship, the base of his ship is like four times the size of a normal uh, a normal ship. So this is called a large base ship. It basically moves exactly the same as the other ships, but it's just, um, you know, it's so much bigger that it happens, it has a few extra rules. Um, like if there's ion weapons, it's harder to ionize a ship like that. And we don't have any of those in this game. But also it's, it, it handles differently. So, uh, you know, a, a, a one forward makes it, because its base is twice the length, a one forward will send it much farther than it will send a small base ship. So they they fly very differently, and if you ever get into this game, these ships are very cool, but they're harder to fly. They definitely take a little more getting used to. Alright, so Chewbacca did a turn. Um, Darth Vader hasn't moved yet, so Chewbacca doesn't know where he's going to be. Um, Chewbacca can shoot wherever he wants, though. So, Chewbacca looks like he might get shot from this TIE Interceptor too, but I can't check that until... I'm lining up shots, so I have to kind of just eyeball it. So Chewbacca is actually going to take a target lock this time, and he'll take one on Darth Vader. All right, so Chewbacca is taking a target lock. Plus, it's a good thing to take target locks sometimes because they 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 persist. So even if I roll perfectly, then I get the target lock, and then I focus next turn. Now I have a target lock and a focus, and that's a recipe for a great hit. Okay, Darth Vader is going to attack or move rather. He is going to do a one bank. He is coming in for a close, close shot on Chewbacca. <clears throat> All right, Darth Vader already has a target lock here. Now I can tell right away that these are obviously going to be within range one of each other. So it's going to be a lot of dice thrown. Darth Vader could die this turn. So he's going to take a focus, and he's going to take an evade. Now, if this were any other ship, Darth Vader could have barrel rolled to get out of his firing arc. However, because the Millennium Falcon can ignore its firing arc, that won't work here. Turreted ships are very deadly, and this type of sh this ship specifically is very, very deadly. All right. Now, fortunately, Darth Vader does get to go first. <clears throat> now he's got this. This evade is really going to help him try to stay alive. So Darth Vader normally attacks with two dice. This is going to be a powerful attack. Darth Vader is attacking the Millennium Falcon at range one clearly within range one. So he adds an extra die to roll. And don't forget he's got a target lock, so who, he's, his advanced targeting computer is going to let him add a crit result to whatever he rolls. Um, and so we rolled a crit, a hit, a focus, and a crit. 
he'll spend the focus to turn that into a hit. So we have two crits and two hits. That's a fantastic roll. That's a very, very good roll. Chewbacca gets one die, and it is an evade, so it will cancel one of the hits, but it still has three damage coming onto Chewbacca. So Chewbacca will apply the normal damage first, with shield gone, now the critical damage. There's two of them, so the first one goes to shields, the second one actually goes to hull. So when a critical damage goes to hull, you deal the card and you flip it face up. Okay. But Chewbacca's special ability in this case, so this, this card is a thrust control fire. Let's say you receive a stress token and flip this card face down. But Chewbacca gets to ignore the crits and flip them face down after you see them. So we've got, so the, the Falcon has one damage to its hull. It's out of shields. It has seven hull left. Um, but it's still doing well. All right, Darth Vader shot. Now it's Chewbacca's turn. Chewbacca has an, a base attack of three. At range one, he gets to roll one extra die. Uh, but Darth Vader gets three dice for defense. Now Chewbacca does have a target lock, so he'll be able to re-roll some of these. And he has, we have a fantastic roll. So we have a crit, a hit, and a hit, and an eyeball. Now I did not take a focus, so I can't flip this over to a hit. But what I can do is I can spend my target lock to re-roll any number of dice. And I'll just choose one in this case. Now I don't have to do this. If I want to save it for next turn, I can, but I'm going to go ahead and spend it and re-roll this die. And I'll, I got another focus, or another eyeball. So, only three damage. It would have been better to take a focus in that case. You kind of never know. So, Vader's turn. Let's see if he can survive. He rolled two evades and an eyeball. Now, the two evades are going to be enough to cancel out the two hits, but without the crit, it's going to get through but he has an evade token. And by spending an evade token, you can add an evade result to your results. So Darth Vader takes no damage. He completely dodges that attack. And that's the beauty of the evade token. The evade token lets you add one evade symbol to your roll, but it's only useful on defense. The beauty of focus is focus works on both offense and defense, but evades are guaranteed at least one, because a focus does you nothing if you roll blanks, right? Or there's always the chance that I could have rolled all three evades and needed a fourth one because of you know a fourth damage. So Darth Vader takes no damage. Uh, now we go to the B-Wing. Now the B-Wing has no shot. This guy's obviously an arc, but they bumped, so the B-Wing cannot shoot him. Now the TIE Interceptor has Chewbacca. Now I, I line this up. He has his corner here, and you measure from closest point to closest point. Um, he's definitely an arc, and it's range two. So Chewie will get one die, but the Interceptor gets three dice. And he rolled two hits and a blank, so the focus didn't really matter in this case. Um, Chewie is going to roll one evade, so Chewie Baka will take one damage. That's his second damage card. And that's all the shooting for this round. We're going to move on to the next round after we pick up all the green tokens. The target locks and stress will remain. Okay, let's, let's set these dials. set. I'm going to do the ones first. And he's doing, our interceptor here is doing a hard one. Now this one might put him on an obstacle. And yes, he's on this obstacle. So we land on a debris cloud. Debris cloud means we get one stress token. And then we roll a die. On a critical hit we would take a damage. Or critical damage, but we did not roll it, we rolled an eyeball, so we just have a stress. Now we cannot take an action because we have a stress token. So, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to do a green maneuver to try to clear that stress. Um, and the unfortunate thing is the front of my ship is also gonna, no matter what maneuver I do next turn, 
the front of my ship is it's going to hit. So I'm going to I'm gonna get another stress token next turn. So that's a really bad spot for him. But because it's a debris cloud and not an asteroid, he still can shoot. Um, although it may be obstructed depending on where he shoots. Obstruction is another thing we're going to talk about this turn because there probably will be some obstructions. All right, B-Wing. B-Wing is doing a one bank. This is a green maneuver, so that will clear his stress. And he managed to avoid that. Um, managed to avoid the debris cloud, but he uh, and he clears his stress, so he can take an action. But it doesn't have probably won't have a shot on this interceptor. So right now he's just going to take a target lock on the interceptor, and in hopes that he'll have a shot next turn. All right, Chewbacca is doing a one bank in this way and it's going to push him right into Darth Vader. So I'll just move it along as best I can and as soon as the ship touches it will bump him right there. So there's a regular bump. Uh, now what? He bumped so he loses, He skips his perform action step. Now I mentioned that they couldn't shoot each other. That's only true if they stay touching. Darth Vader is going to move now and he's going to do a 4K turn, and I can't exactly get it on there. So what I would do in this case is I could either put a 2 maneuver next to this guy and mark the ship, or I can kind of put it on the side. You can only use the sides with the straight maneuvers. You can't really do it on the curved maneuvers because it changes the position of the ship. So I'll use the side of the peg instead. It's All right. So Darth Vader did a K turn. I turned him around. Now he's facing this way. All right, so he's did like a U-turn in space. It gives him a stress, so even though he can take two actions, he can't take any actions when he has a stress token. Um, but he still keeps his target lock that was on Chewbacca. So we have uh, all of our maneuvers are complete. Um, Darth Vader is going to shoot first, and what he is still going to be at range one, so he'll get an extra damage die. So he starts off with his base attack of two. We add one extra die, and then he'll be, have the opportunity to add a critical result if he doesn't spend his target lock. So we got, hmm, well this is interesting. You see, he, we got two eyeballs in a, in a blank. So maybe I want to spend my target lock and lose this critical, and, and I will. I'll spend the target lock and just get to reroll these three. And we got two crits, so we actually got more damage that way, so that was good. Um, Chewbacca gets one die, and it's blank, so it'll be two face up that will go to Chewbacca. Uh, he gets to flip them both down, but it's blinded pilot and major hull breach. Bad thing. So that's four damage total to Chewbacca. Chewbacca's close to death. He's got four more hits until he's dead. Chewbacca gets to shoot back. Um, he's going to shoot at Darth Vader, so he's going to get a fourth die for being at range one. And he gets a critical and a, a regular hit. One crit and one damage, two eyeballs. Darth Vader is going to roll, and he gets all blanks. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now, I'm not manufacturing these rolls. These are all real-time rolls. All right, Darth Vader rolled two blanks. So he's going to get a, a face down for the regular damage goes first, and the critical always goes last. So it's just regular, and it's critical as major explosion. Oh, this is lovely. Uh, roll an attack die on a hit result, suffer a critical damage, then flip this card face down. So I... So this is one of those damage cards that can do me even more damage. I rolled. All right, I got an eyeball, so no extra damage. Now, Darth Vader's got two damage cards assigned to him, but his hull value is three, so he's still alive. He's got one more point of hull. All his shields are gone. Um, so Chewbacca shot. The B-Wing has no shot. The TIE Interceptor um, does have a shot. So what I was talking about is obstruction before. If you're shooting somebody and they're through an asteroid and the closest point to closest point and you line it up and it goes through a rock, that the defender gets an extra green die to roll if it's obstructed, whether it's a debris cloud or a asteroid. In this case, his closest corner here is actually out and it's not so that so the closest point to closest point here is not going to go through the debris cloud. It's close, but it's not a, so it won't be an obstructed attack. It will, however, be a range two attack, so the interceptor gets to roll three dice. Wow, wow, hit, crit, crit, 
And then Chewie gets his one die in return. It's an evade. It'll cancel the hit. That's two more critical damage. This is actually a really, really, really good match for Chewbacca because hit, almost every damage card he's got was critical. Like this one was a direct hit. It would count as two damage, but we get to flip it down because of Chewbacca's ability. Or Thrust Control Fire. Uh, receive a Stress Token. Uh, but I don't have to do that because I get to ignore it because of Chewbacca's ability. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six damage on Chewbacca. He's still alive. He's just been pounded and pounded. He's still alive. Uh, B-Wing hasn't been doing much here, though. He hasn't had any shots, so that's unfortunate for him. All right, uh, that's the end of that turn. We're going to do another turn. Now, my Interceptor has a, has a stress token. He's also almost certainly going to get another stress token because he's going to his template's going to overlap that thing, so I definitely need to do a green maneuver. Alright. Chewbacca's being very predictable. So we're all set. One's going to go first. And he's doing a two bank turn. All right, a two bank maneuver. This will clear his stress because it is a green maneuver. The interceptors have a lot of green maneuvers on their dials. Uh, but the template does go over the debris cloud. So even though he clears his stress, he gets another one from that same debris cloud and has to roll one more time. But now he's finally cleared of it. All right, it's a damage, but it's not a critical damage, so the debris clouds effect doesn't cause him to take any damage. But stress is still there, so no action. Okay, uh, B-Wing. B-Wing's doing a hard two-turn. Now this one may actually... Yeah, it does touch the, the cloud. So he gets a stress token, so no action for him either, and he has to roll for damage. And he gets a hit, so, uh, so no damage there. And I forgot to move my little, um, his target lock from, from last turn with the ships. All right, so the B-Wing moved, uh, or Chewbacca is going to move now. Chewbacca is going to do a hard one turn. And I love these hard one turns because you, you can kind of just keep doing them over and over again and stay in one spot. And Chewbacca's going to take a focus this time. All right. And last but not least, Darth Vader is going to do a one bank, which is green. We'll clear his stress, and he will be able to take two actions. Because he clears his stress, and he will take both a focus and a target lock on Chewbacca. And Darth Vader is going to hope to kill Chewbacca before Chewbacca can fire back. So it's range one again. We get two dice, we get a third dice for being range one, and then we also have that crit from the advanced targeting computer that Darth Vader has. So, we rolled two hits and an eyeball. I'll spend my focus, put the eyeball there. I still have my target lock on there, so there's my critical from the advanced targeting computer. Four damage. Uh, it looks like that's going to do it for Chewbacca. Chewbacca rolls an evade, but still has to take three, so that is enough to kill him. So Chewbacca blows up. And now in an, in an official game, you'll still deal the uh, all, all of the required damage cards. That last one was face up, and then we flip it back face down. Okay, so Chewbacca is gone. When you when the ship is destroyed, the target lock comes off because there's no other ship for it anymore. Uh, next is the B-wing. Now the B-wing's got a choice. He's all alone now. He can take a shot at Darth Vader. It is just outside of range one. Or he can take a range one shot at the Interceptor. Now he's going to take his shot at the Interceptor because it's range one and uh, he has a target lock there. So he gets a fourth die because he normally has three. He has range one, so he gets a fourth die. Um, he's got two hits, an eyeball, and a blank. So I'll spend the target lock to re-roll the blank and the eyeball. And we got another blank and an eyeball. Well, that's awful. <laughs> so two damage or two hits, and the Interceptor rolls three defense dice. 
Uh, he rolled two evades, so no damage. And nobody else can return fire. So it looks pretty bad for the B-Wing. I'll probably play one or two more turns, and that'll, that'll about do it. Typically you play until all your ships are destroyed, or if there's a time limit on the round, you'll play until time is calm. B-Wing's got a stress, so he wants to do a green maneuver. Alright, Y-Wing's gonna go, or the Interceptor rather, is gonna go first, Y-Wing. And he's doing a green hard two. You know, hard 90 degree turns are usually never green. This is one of the few ships that can actually make hard green turns. Very cool. Alright, he cleared his stress, and now we can do some stuff. Um, he's just gonna take a focus, because he's not sure what's, what's gonna happen. Alright. Darth Vader's next, Darth, or I'm sorry, B-Wing is next. B-Wing is doing a straight one, which is green. And he will, that will clear his stress. Now he's still behind this interceptor, so he'll take, he'll take a focus as well. And now Darth Vader's turn. Darth Vader's doing a hard two. This is white for the, uh, the same maneuver was green for the interceptor, but it's white for the TIE Advanced. So Darth Vader will do that. Um, for one of his actions, he will take a target lock on the B-Wing. And for the other action, being that he knows he has no shot, he's going to take an evade. Because he's only got one hit left. Alright, now the B-Wing is actually going to shoot at Darth Vader. Um, no, normally Darth Vader would get to shoot first, but he's got no, nobody in his arc. So the B-Wing's going to take, uh, and it's a range 2 shot, so he's going to get 3 dice, and he has a focus. Uh, so he got a crit, a hit, and a blank. So a target lock actually would have been better this time. Darth Vader's going to roll three dice. He rolls one evade and an eyeball and a blank. So he's going to spend his second evade to add a second evade result, which cancels both hits. And that was a smart move. And the Interceptor's now get a, gets a chance, but he has nobody to shoot either. So all the greens come off the board. And we're going to do... Well, another turn. And that. And okay. So the interceptor is going to go first. He's going to do a three K turn. And I didn't think this through well enough. But these are the type of mistakes that will be made. This might bump. Um, uh, I think I'm going to say that's close enough. It looks close enough to me. All right, so he gets a stress for that. And uh, Darth Vader, no, that was like the B-wing. It does a two hard turn. And. Um, he's going to take a focus, and then Darth Vader is doing a 4K turn. And he keeps his target lock because it stays, but he does get a stress and cannot take any actions this turn. Alright, um, Darth Vader is going to shoot first. He's range 2 from this B-Wing, so he'll get two dice to roll, and he can add his crit from the advanced targeting computer. He gets two blanks. Oh, he's just going to add the crit. He's going to keep his target lock there. The B-Ring gets one die, and he rolls an eyeball, and he could spend his focus right now to turn that into an evade, or he could um, attack and save it for attack. But he's going to spend it now just to cancel that one crit. And then the B-Wing gets to shoot back. Three dice at Vader at range two. Hit, hit, hit. All right, Vader gets to roll three dice. Um, oh, wow, evade. Focus, evade. So he can cancel the two hits, but the third one is going to get through. And that's going to kill Darth Vader. It's his third damage. Boom. He comes off the board. And so does his target lock. So now it's just down to an interceptor and a B Wing. And we'll see what's going to happen here. All right. Good. 
Okay, so the intercepts are doing a two turn. I was thinking of doing a hard two bank, but I think it would, it would bump. So he's going to go there, and I don't think we'll be able to get a shot off, but we'll try. He's going to boost to, to try to come around. a little imprecise there. I apologize for that. All right, the B-Wing, he's doing a 2K turn. B-Wing is one of the only ships that has the ability to do a 2K turn. It's very, very short maneuver. He gets a stress, so he gets no action. His action was boost. We'll clear some of these dice off the table. And it doesn't look like the interceptor was able to get the B wing in his arc, but the B wing has a shot at the interceptor at range two. So three, uh, three dice and no hits. So all right, and these things will happen. The dice will do that to you. Okay, so now in this last turn, the interceptor is going to do a hard two. And he's going to barrel roll to make sure we have a B-Wing in our arc, hopefully. And the B-Wing is doing a one forward. And, oh, they're both going to have a shot at each other. The B-Wing is going to take a target log. <clears throat> okay. Now they both can shoot each other. The B-Wing just barely has this, the, the corner in his arc here, but the interceptor clearly has it. <clears throat> so, um, B-Wing shoots first because the pilot's skill 4. So he starts with 3 dice, he gets to add 1 for being range 1. And we got 2 hits, uh, an eyeball on a blank, so I'll spin the target lock, re-roll these 2 dice, and we ended up with 4 hits. So a target lock was definitely the right option there. Interceptor gets 3 dice, and he got only 1 evade, so that means 3 hits are going to get through, and he's only got 3 hull, so that destroys the interceptor the b-wing is your winner and that's it and then you shake hands with your opponent you say good game and that's and that's how it works so this has been a demo game um, I hope you guys liked it it was just a, uh, a smaller game normally you're gonna have a little more ships you're gonna have a hundred points worth of stuff in a typical game so uh, let me know what you think and if I uh, you know if I if I didn't answer any of your questions or whatever feel free to leave comments and as always guys uh, you know if you like this subscribe there's plenty more stuff and I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much.